Right then, um, today is going to be all about pick and place and that's why I've got this big machine behind me. Got our fully automated pick and place machine up and running now and I'm going to run through uh, using it. So um, it's going to be over multiple parts. Uh, first part for today and this video, um, all about basically the machine, just a general overview of the machine capabilities and um, yeah, what it can do basically and the various parts um, we'll move on in other videos about um, how to you know, set up components in there get the reels in feed them through uh, setting up the board and running a program uh, how to program it to be in place actual components so um, I guess let's make a start so this is the uh, MV10, uh, MV10, the M10V, uh, fully automated pick and place machine made by Mechatronica, uh, company out in Poland. They knocked these out. Uh, I believe it was two guys that started the company off, and uh, yeah, they're knocking these out ten to the dozen nowadays. It's uh, one step down from uh, production line. Um, Component placement in uh, PCB houses, in assembly houses, one step down from that, and it's a huge step up from the bench top uh, pick and place machines, these semi automated ones, uh, which, uh, to be honest, are complete and utter bastard to use. Uh, this one is so much simpler. Go one higher, and it gets a lot, lot easier. It's um, fully automated. It's got look up, look down cameras, uh, multiple reel feeders, vibratory feeders and so on, I'll show you those in a moment. Um, it can pick and place about uh, 1,300 to 1,600 components an hour. That works out to about component placement of uh, about one and a half seconds per component. Uh, but obviously that can increase with component size you have to be more careful picking up component. The larger component is, the harder it is to actually pick up and place, so it takes that a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> right, uh, component sizes, um, what it can actually pick up, anything from 0201 packages, so the absolute minuscule packages, 0201s, all the way up to about 35 by 35 millimeter packages, so your larger, um, so like your QFPs and your BGA packages, things like that, won't have a problem with it. So small to large, thumbs up. Reasonably quick, thumbs up. Brilliant. I believe it costs about, I'm not too sure, I'll have to look that one up. I'll flash it up on the screen right here. So that's how much it costs for this particular machine in euros. Uh, this one is a second hand one though that we did get hold of. This is an X demonstration model. But, because it's x demo, it's hardly been used, hardly been touched. So these machines normally go, you know, run 24 hours a day. Um, looking at board set right and centre. This particular one, you know, a few hours for, you know, a couple of months on demo. That's all that it's had, and it's been in the showroom as well. So it's not had any old Mickey Mouse, you know, Mickey Mouse running on it. It's been professionally run by people who know what they're doing. So. Yeah, there's no problems with this one, and we've loaded it up with a few reels already, no problem, and it's been picking them placing like a dream. So we've got that a really good discount, and it works excellent. So, moving on, let's take you around different parts of it, and I'll show you what it can do. Alright then, so, this is the M10V. It's got uh, one two carriages on either side. This is the back of one carriage, a tape feed, a uh, grill feeder, uh, fitted with 8mm uh, uh, tapes, uh, all reeled up. Uh, they chug through the machine down here. This is the exit of the feeder where the components are actually picked up. You can see some in there already. So I'll show you how to reel in, feed these through, get the tapes fed back, and what have this so early? You can know, just about see the tapes there. I'll show you how to set up that. Uh, bulk feeder tray, so you can have loose components and what have you in bulk form. 
place there, it will automatically pick up those. Uh, the trays, you don't have to use the one that you actually get with the machine, you can actually make your own. I am, I've already done the design, handed that into the workshop here to get made, so it actually covers the entire bed. So you get a, so we can place, you know, lots of different components. I mean, these are quite small at the moment. I don't know if you can see those in there. So you can only fit in a couple of, you know, power diodes, few resistors at the most, and caps into these at present because uh, they are quite small. They're only about 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters. So uh, the one that I've made has got, it's got larger holders and uh, a give back tray as well. I'll explain give back later on. That's our other tape feeder, where that the previous one had just room for eight millimeter uh, tapes. This one is um, slightly different. We've still got the same eight mil ones down here. Plenty of eight millimeter ones because there's absolutely shitloads of SMD stuff on that, and a couple of the larger uh, reel holders. So we've got a uh, twelve millimeter, two twelves, and two sixteens. Uh, for uh, uh, things like uh, SOIC, so you can see on that strip there, I've got some SOICs on that one, I've got some power diodes on this one, um, you can have other ones on there. Uh, I mentioned the vibratory feeder, that's down here, so we can fit tubes into the machine, and that all feeds down into a little carrier down the bottom, you can just about see that sticking out the end where your components will slide down. It vibrates the components down, ready for picking and placing. All these feeders, they're all programmable, so you can program them with different sizes, different size components, and different feed rates. Same with the vibratory one, different vibration settings for the various components. So you want to have a larger vibration for larger components, and lighter vibration for smaller components. So that's all settable in the actual feeders can swap the feeders about but if you do swap the feeders then you're going to have to reprogram the machine and whatever to the components that you're swapping and out because they will be at slightly different positions perfectly normal any pick and place machine you'd have to do that too down on the bed this is where you hold in your circuit board uh, without the tray you can take the tray the bolt feed tray you can have a larger board placed in there as long as they don't obscure the look up camera uh, but we're going to set this up so we can process A4 panels so you can get an A4 sheet in here and um, yeah, you can pick a place A4 sheet the actual uh, PCBs are held in place by these two rails one's a spring loaded one back here so basically the idea is you slot your board in to this rail down the bottom which is perfectly square you square it up using the camera and you can move this back one, this rear one backs and forwards if you like. If you've got a larger board, we'll bring it closer. It'll always square up to here. And to clip the board in, you, it's a spring loaded push fit to hold the board in place, to clamp it in. <coughs> right then, uh, you got a, as I mentioned, you've got a look up camera for component identification. It does do intelligent component recognition. So you train it to various component footprints. It will match, it will just check the component when it picks it up from either the tray or the feeders or wherever. Uh, head will bring it over to the lookup camera and it will ID the component from the bottom to make sure that it is the right size and right component that you're picking up. Uh, that's a lookup function for component recognition. That's all intelligent. You program in the component and it checks it against what you program it with. Over the rear, that is our head, pickup head and camera that does mo the majority of the work. So that little bulky silver thing sticking down at the moment, that's the nozzle. It doesn't look particularly small for picking up fine pitch components, that's because it doesn't have a nozzle on it at the moment. And underneath, if you can just see now, I'm not too sure, that's our look down camera. It uses the look down camera to train the uh, pickup head to the feeders uses look down camera to search for components in the tray so it will scan the tray ID the component uh, pick it up what not um, and it also uses a look down camera to look for uh, fiducials in your boards so 
in the corners of your board to um, yeah to program in your board so it can it knows where your X Y uh, coordinates are for placing your components and it will also use the look down camera to for programming and manually the various pad locations and rotational um, aspects of your board and components when it places them also uses the lookup camera for component checking as well so once you finish placing the board you can use the look down camera and do a uh, compare so you can uh, check the components make sure that they're on the board and you can do a visual inspection with the camera as well to make sure they're all placed and as you can see I've got some components placed down there I've got an SOIC already on the board uh, up there I've got a few caps and resistors and what not uh, that big chunky diode so it won't have a problem picking and placing any of these components so there you go there's a QFP100 package so it can pick and place those perfectly fine <coughs> and uh, what you're not so that's basically the machine uh, oh yeah nozzles nozzle bar at the rear automatically changes the nozzle depending on what component is picking up that's all programmed in when you're doing your programming these are nozzle, nozzles on this particular machine that we've got we go from 0402 to an extremely larger nozzle I can't remember what the largest nozzle is but there you go you can see the larger nozzle there and uh, the 0402 one a very fine uh, nozzle you might just be able to make that out hopefully yeah just in just that see can't focus on that very well for 0402 is for uh, mini components that's all automatically picked up and I sh should mention that the uh, head has also got a uh, vacuum sensor built into it a pressure sensor so it can tell whether or not the um, component has actually been picked up if it picks up a component drops the component you know, it knows that it's dropped the component it knows that it's picked it up it knows that it has a nozzle in the uh, in the head so it can do that from the uh, vacuum sensor it's actually built into the head oh boy right apart from all those feeders and carriages we've still got space for another one that can slot in down there so if we want another vibratory feed we can slot that in or a tape feed you can single tape feed or strips tape strips we can you can get hold of feeders for that you don't actually need it for the tape because you can like I say place your loose components in the tray for picking up so you don't need the tape and if you do absolutely need the tape you can always do another tape holder over here on the bed and train it to use another one of these but for tapes instead so it is very very versatile um, and there we go, if we close up the lid lid does have a interlock the machine's got an interlock so it will only operate with the lid down that means that if there's any gusts of wind or anything like that or any drafts because someone opens up a door or something it's not going to blow your components everywhere no hands can get in the way when the machine's running so you're not going to crash the head or anything like that and if anything does happen to the head, you do get a head crash or something jams up, there is a chunky emergency stop on the front of the machine. And also down on the floor there, that's our compressor for the uh, pickup head. Currently set to, let's have a look, how many bars is this set to? What's that about? Six bar on the pickup head. Uh, the main tank is about eight. And then that's regulated down on the actual head slightly as well. So yeah, there you've got a, a nice bit of air to play with. You probably, uh, the compressor will only run whenever it needs pumping up, obviously. So it's very, very silent to run. What I'll do is I'll kick off the software that I've got over here and I'll show you the machine in action. So let's start up the software, get it up and running. <clears throat> there we go, this is the software, it presents you with the board um, settings first whenever you go into it. But I have got a program for a SOIC, a UA741 op amp, 
that I've got on the reel. That's that SL8 package on the reel that I've already showed you that I've placed over on this board. There we I'll pull that off for the moment, that one. For testing purposes, just using double sided tape instead of solder paste in the board. That way you can pick and place you know, tons of components very quickly and easily and strip them off the board. So for the test runs, yeah, quite straightforward. So let's run that program and you can get an idea of how the uh, machine operates. Hopefully you can see what's going on in here. Uh, let's see if we can get a view on that. That nah, doesn't look too bad there. Right now, I'll try and keep it steady while I run this. Yeah, off it goes. Checks the board. Checks the nozzle, picks up the component, aligns it and then places it. Done quick as that. And that's your SOIC placed and uh, there it is, it's placed another one on the board. No problem. So there you go. So it head picked up a nozzle, brought over the component, picked up the component, brought it over to the lookup camera, twisted the component into position, so I've rotated it by 90 degrees, done a check to make sure it's the right component, the right size, brought it over to the board and placed it on the board. Simples. And I'll take you through that process of picking and placing a board, do say three, four components, um, I show you how to reel in the stuff, get a, get a tape fed through, uh, set up the board and uh, do a program so it performs that. So I will leave you there and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.